guys, this is the first video of the series, so I'm going to start off very basic here, and uh, this goes out to the beginner uh, guitar players who's just getting started on playing blues guitar. Um, some of you more advanced uh, players, just hold on, I'll get there. Um, I'm just going to work my way up, and then pretty soon we'll be uh, working with some uh, licks and ideas and, uh, you know, chord substitutions and whatnot using the backing track that I played too at the beginning of this video. Um, that's something I made for this video, so just... Uh, I'll put it in the link below and, uh, you know, use that track and we'll just keep adding to it. And uh, that way you'll get uh, command on playing, uh, you know, uh, a 12 bar blues in A. And uh, hopefully this stuff will help you out. And thank you for tuning in. Okay, guys, first up is the rhythm, as I said. Um, I'm going to start off very basic here. Uh, you beginners out here, you may get something out of this. So, uh, I start with the key of um, A, that's what this song is in. Uh, this is an A bar chord, fifth fret bar on the with the first finger. Um, C sharp with your middle finger and then your ring finger and your little finger will be on the seventh fret on the fifth string and the uh, fourth string. So that's an A, E, A, C sharp, and then an E and an A barred with that first finger. So you have an A bar chord like this, and then the second chord up would be a D9. Love this chord for the blues. So this is in place of a D, but we're uh, changing it to a D ninth. It could also be a D seventh, but I still prefer the D nine. Um, if you don't know that, that would be the uh, fifth string on the fifth fret with your first or your middle finger, and then your first finger on the F sharp note on the uh, fourth fret on the fourth string. And then here's the tricky part: if you haven't done this chord before, you bar the uh, last three strings with your ring finger. So you're not going to hit the top string. You can actually just touch it with your middle finger. That way, if you do strum it, you won't hear it. It's muted out. So all you're hearing is the bottom five strings. That's a D9. And you can add your little finger if you want. Um, it just adds a little variety to the chord. That's kind of like a 13th. Sort of like what you would do with the D chord. And you add a little suspended fourth or maybe take it off. It doesn't change the chord. It just adds a little uh, texture to it. So you may see me do that. Um, there's the D9, and the other chord that we have is the five chord, which is an E9. Same thing as the uh, D, except up two frets. It's now an E, G sharp, a D, and an F sharp, and a B. And again, you can add the 13. And if I'm gonna go down to the D9, you could uh, chromatically walk your way down, add the 13th if you want, and back to A. That's what we have here. So, uh, on the A also, I may build up to an A 7th, and um, like I said, this is very basic for most of you, but uh, we'll get there on the uh, future videos and some cooler stuff. But uh, your little finger will move down to the 8th fret. That is a G note on the 2nd string. So you have an A 7th like that. That's the three chords I'm going to use, four if you count the uh, little finger here. Um, for this rhythm. So I'm going to go ahead and record this rhythm. I'm going to take out my rhythm that I used. I'm using the same backing track that you saw me play over at the beginning. I just made that for this video. So I'll put that in the link below and uh, go ahead and use it and just keep applying all these techniques I show you every time we do these uh, videos and we'll just keep adding to it um, every lesson. So um, let's get started here. Okay, now, the first thing you uh, might notice a few things. Um, sometimes when I go to the F9, I'll, I'll approach it from an F, or from an F9 to an E9, I'll, I'll approach it from the F9 to the E9. That's a good uh, walk down for the, the, um, the tail end of this song. Kind of do that. And again, I might have done some chromatic stuff here. Not sure, I um, have to look at what I played, but uh, I'm just kind of adding this to uh, every lesson, you know, a new technique that I might apply. Um, so what you got is uh, four measures at the beginning. One, two, three, four, that's one measure. Two, and then two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. So there's four measures of the A. And then we're on the uh, fifth measure with the D9. We're gonna do two measures of that. 
back to A, two measures, maybe one measure of the uh, regular A and then two, another measure of the uh, A seventh. Then we're on the five chord, four, four beats there, and then uh, one measure with four beats of the D nine, then A. And then here's that little tag I put on there. You can put your 13th on there if you want. Um, and then, just to help you beginners with the rhythm, I'm kind of going a one, a two, a three, a four. So if you lift your fingers off, you'll get kind of a clunky sound. That's what I call, you know, clunk, clunk chord, clunk chord, clunk chord. And if you're counting that, a one, a two, a three, a four. So you get used to bouncing your left hand. That, that little rhythm there um, makes it sound a little cooler for this uh, shuffle. So you go a one, a two, a three, a four, 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 two. And then you're, this four chord, you can slide into the, the D9. You can add that 13th if you want. Uh, if you want a little music theory here, that four chord, why they call that the four chord, if you're in the key of A, which we are, you have the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do scale. Hopefully you know that. If you don't, it's fifth fret, A, B on the seventh fret, C sharp on the fifth string, uh, fourth fret, D with your middle finger, um, little finger on the seventh fret, that's an E, and then an F sharp here on the uh, fourth fret on the fourth string, and then your Second to last note would be your G sharp, that's the sixth fret, and then A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight would be like one. So that's Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Di, Do. So when they call this the four chord, what that is, is you go A, B, C sharp, D. That's, that fourth note is a D. So that's what they call that the four chord. One, two, three, four. So that's the four chord. Five chord would be here. One, two, three, four, five. That's the five chord. So you got a five chord, a four chord, and a one chord, and that's your basic rhythm. Um, so there you have it, and uh, I'm going to go on to rhythm number two. Okay, rhythm number two, I'm going to uh, do something that sounds like that. These are s some of the basic things a lot of people play when they uh, play a 12-bar blues, but uh, this is going out to the beginners who don't know this. Um, so instead of doing the full-on bar chord here, we're going to break this down and strip it to uh, your first finger barring the last four strings on the uh, fourth string, third string, second string, and first string. And then your thumb over the top, that'll hit that low A. And then I'm choking out that fifth string by touching it with either the thumb or the first finger. That way you can kind of strum through it and you don't hear that fifth string. Um, and then what we're going to do is hammer the middle finger onto the C-sharp note, which is the sixth fret on the third string. So you have that. Strum it and hammer down. And then I'm gonna bar the three here with the ring finger. That's a seven, seven, seven on the fourth string, third string, and second string. So we're not hitting the little string and we're not hitting the top two strings here on the, on the bass strings. So we have this, which is like a D chord. Um, but we're just hitting these three and then back to this A like that with a hammer. So the pattern I'm going to show you is this. We're going to hit the thumb and then we're going to strum the basically your fourth string, third string, and second string with the hammer. So I'm going to go thumb, hammer, thumb, bar, seventh fret, and then all together. So separate, separate, together. To count it, a one, a two, three, four. You leave four blank. A one, a two, three, four. A one, a two, three, four. And then when I go to the four chord, um, the D, instead of moving it downward, I move it up so I can do the same fingering. I'm just putting it in a different place. So here's the A up to the D fret, what I call the D fret, it's the 10th fret. Put my thumb up there, separate like that, separate, separate, together. That's for the D. Back to A, and then the E, so we go up to the 12th fret, so up here, the D, which is the D, 10th fret, and then back to A, and then you can end with the uh, E9 here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and record that real quick.
Okay, that's rhythm number two. Okay, on to rhythm three. Um, it's very much like rhythm two I showed you. You have that figure that I showed you, and then we're going to add this. This is a, an extension here. We're going to keep um, our first finger. We're going to move that up to the seventh position, um, barring the uh, second, third, and fourth string. Um, again, you may bar the little one, but I'm primarily trying to focus on the second, third, and fourth string on this, um, this rhythm idea. So we're going to hammer onto the ninth fret and the eighth fret of the third string and the second string. So this is an E and this is a G. Together, that makes a, um, a, a seventh chord. So you may recognize it if I put this uh, ring finger on the bottom note, that's a C sharp here. And if I put all three notes on there, if I drag that down, you'll probably recognize that as a D seventh chord. And up here it's an A. So D, E, F, G, A. So you have an A seventh. But we're not hitting the high one, we're just hitting the low A and hammering that ninth and eighth. So you have this figure. Shift, hammer, back to that, to the first part again, and end with this, so it'll be this figure right here. So you play it separate, separate, together, 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 so. And then when it goes to the uh, D chord, you just scoot up to the 10th fret. position for the E, 5 chord, 4 chord, um, if you want the added extension it'd be this. But um, as you know on the uh, last part we only have uh, 4 beats on the E and 4 beats on the D, so you'd have, that'd be uh, one, one measure there and then that's the second measure and then end with an A. And the five chord. So let's uh, record that and see what that sounds like. Have rhythm three. Okay guys let's add a, a harmony to the rhythm figure we did earlier. Something of that sort. Um, we have our hammer that we did earlier on the uh, first rhythm idea I was showing you or that second uh, rhythm figure with the hammer and then we're gonna have what what I'm calling the six um, you know sixes on harmonies. This is like a G note and an E and if you go up the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, they're six uh, degrees apart on the scale, so they're called six harmony. Um, if I invert it and put the G on the higher note, up an octave, that would be considered a third. One, two, three. But uh, this direction, it's a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six apart, so they call them sixes. And then uh, we're gonna slide that up to an A and an F sharp. Again, I'm hitting the second string and the uh, fourth string. Keep it on those two strings. You could do a hybrid picking too. I don't know if uh, most of you probably know this, but uh, use your pick and your middle finger, and you can pull, you know, pull your middle finger up and use your pick for a downstroke still and kind of pinch them together like this. Or you could just strum it. The advantage of the hybrid picking is that you don't have to mute out any notes. You just pick the two that you're wanting to hit. If you want to strum through it, you have to make sure you, you mute out all the notes with your left hand so you don't hear anything. See, I'm strumming all the strings, but all you're hearing is these two notes that I'm playing. So you have to kind of get used to that. If that's hard for you, you might, might go to the hybrid picking and try that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to incorporate those two rhythms. I'm going to show you the rhythm number two with the little hammer and then add this. So we're gonna have this. And then we're borrowing it again from that rhythm figure. This is the D. So we do a little hammer. 
So we have this. And then of course up here, be the 10th fret, 10th position for the D chord, and then back to A. And then the E, D, then the A. Still in with your five chord. So let's, uh, let's roll this and see what it sounds like. Okay, we're on the uh, fifth uh, rhythm example. Um, I'll probably end this this uh, particular video here with this fifth example, and then we'll pick up in a few days, and then we'll have like four or five more examples of what you could keep throwing in on this uh, one blues track. So I think if we just keep, uh, you know, our uh, nose to the grindstone and just uh, you know work with one rhythm track only, and just keep adding things to it, uh, I think you'll get more out of it than just jumping around from one thing to another. Just kind of stick on one thing and then just throw in, you know, 20 different ideas and just work them. And uh, it'll, uh, you know, start becoming part of your playing and uh, you'll get a better handle on it that way. Um, and then, of course, you could just move it to whatever key you want and use it uh, anywhere you want. On the future, uh, you know, jam tracks, if we're in, um, you know, C, we'll just modulate everything up three frets and then uh, just do the same things I'm showing you here, but in a different position. So on this... Uh, this last example, we're going to throw in some uh, almost kind of jazzy sounding chords. Um, just like we said on the first example, we have an A. I'm going to drop this little finger down to the seventh fret, and that's an F sharp. That on the uh, scale degree is a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's the same note. It's an F sharp. Um, that's like I was telling you right here. That's a root five and a root six. So you got a root five and then a root six. So you have this. Probably most of you know that by now, but uh, we're gonna put this in a different spot. So that F sharp now is gonna be down here. And then if we go up one fret, that is what we call the uh, flat seven. Um, because again, if we go up that major scale, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, t, that is a seven. Normally that's a G sharp, but if we flat it, it becomes a G. And that's the note we want to tag in a blues, because that sounds like, a, you know, a blues tone. Um, the major seven sounds very jazzy, so we, uh, that's not the, uh, not the tone we're trying to get. So we have the flat seven, that's kind of in the pentatonic scale there. So we have a six and a seven. So uh, A, six, seven, flat seven that is, back to A. So we just go back and forth. So it's the normal A, drop your finger down, six, up to the flat seven, back down to six, back to A. Okay, right here, right before we're gonna get ready to go to the uh, four chord on the uh, fourth measure, we're gonna add an A seventh. And then we're gonna go to this chord. This is, uh, this is an A nine chord here. It's also considered a C sharp minor seven flat five, but in this example, it, it uh, plays the A ninth roll. So um, put your first finger on the fourth fret, on the fifth string, skip a string, go to the third string with your middle finger. That's an A, this is a C sharp A. And then you have your ring finger on the fifth fret on the uh, fourth string up, that's the D string. That is a G note. And then your last finger is the uh, fifth fret on the second string. So you have this figure. Um, and then we're not gonna hit the two outside E's. So that's an A9. And then we're going to go to an augmented chord. Um, and what, what I'm showing you this is this is a good way to go from a one chord to a four chord by throwing in these chord substitutions. So uh, as you learn these, you'll be able to, you know, escape the uh, just the one chord and the four chord and kind of throw in some extra voicings that kind of lead into the next chord. It's really... Uh, a lot of fun once you understand so I'm telling you all these numbers and skill degrees and all that if you get a good handle on that then you don't have to have somebody tell you this in the future you just figure it out on your own but you have an A9 and then this augment I was telling you about is a fifth fret on the D string that's a G 
And then you're gonna have these two notes on the sixth fret. So this is a C sharp and an F with your uh, these two fingers, your, your ring finger and your uh, little finger. And then with your middle finger down here on your high A, fifth fret that is. Hopefully you're getting all that. That's an augmented chord. So you have an A9 to an augmented chord to the D9 that I told you about earlier. And then we're gonna throw in a diminish. Now the diminish um, is exactly the same fingering that you had for the uh, A9 chord, except just drop everything down one, one string. Um, it's because the string is tuned different that it, uh, it looks exactly like the other chord, but um, in reality it's, it's a little different just because of the string tuned different. It makes it look just like the same chord, but uh, down here it becomes a diminish. Not to be confused with the A9 shape up here, but down here it's a diminish. So same shape, fourth fret. You can run a diminish. Um, probably most of you know this, but if you don't, I'm just gonna go through everything. So you have a, a one diminished shape here, and then you can bounce up three frets, and it becomes the same diminish. It's just the notes are flipping around in a different order. So like if I pin uh, one of the notes like here's an A, if I go up three frets, then my A is over here. If I go up three more frets, then my A becomes here. And then go up three more frets, and now my A is this finger. So all the notes still remain the same. That's why you can run a diminish three frets at a time. Kind of use that in suspense movies like that. It sounds kind of suspenseful, but in the uh, blues and jazz realm, it's, it's a really good connecting chord. So here's what we got. A, six, flat seven. Back to six, A, six, flat seven, one more of this. Now go back up to your A seventh, two strums there, one strum on that, that equals beat three, that's the A nine. Beat four is your augmented chord. Now we hit the uh, four chord, three, four. Now we're gonna hit a diminish. One, two, three, four. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back to A, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Now what I'm doing there is I'm adding chords all over the place, so uh, it works. Um, you're gonna go up to the ninth fret, and this is a this is a C sharp minor seventh. And all you do is borrow all of the ninth fret all the way down, and put your ring finger on the eleventh fret. That's a, you know, a G sharp or an A flat. And then that, you hit twice, drop it down two more times, and drop it down for, for one strum there. So we got two strums um, up here, two strums on the eighth fret, one strum here, or actually two, sorry, two, and then we're gonna go to the E9, this is the V chord. It'll all uh, connect here in a second. And then we're gonna do that little walk down to D9 for four beats, and then we're gonna go to an A. And before we go to the uh, five chord, I'm gonna show you another diminished chord. Um, you know, just get the most out of this. You may know, you know, this is the same diminished as this one down here, but in a different spot. It's, it's, I really want you guys to have be a well-rounded, um, you know, well-rounded on all these chord shapes so you can throw them in anywhere. You know, throw them on the bass notes, the high notes, wherever. But uh, this diminished here, which if you listen to that it just sounds just like these chords so you have this move it up three frets move it up three more frets you'll see what it sounds like these but um, in this example we're going to keep it up here we have a C sharp on the sixth fret and then an E on the seventh fret and then we got a um, an A sharp or a B flat here on the eighth fret on the D string and then one more note we have the little string, the little finger on the uh, second string, that is, on the G note. So it looks like this and sounds like this. Again, just the four strings that I'm uh, holding. I don't play the two outsides. So we have one, two, three, four, one. Now, this is a B minor seventh. I was telling you about these as being minor sevenths. This is also a minor seventh. We're just leaving out the fifth degree, one, two, three, four, five, fifth degree of that chord. 
So you can make a you can make a minor seventh this way. You can you can go ahead and do it the way I showed you earlier. But uh, again, just try try different directions, and you'll have a good handle on all these chords. There's not that many if you just start learning the variations. I could have done that walk down with just these fingers, or I could put that other finger back on that I just showed you just um, you know a while back here. So we got A, E diminish, B minor seventh whichever way you want to play it. If you play it this way, just make sure you mute out that A string in the middle. So I have the thumb and then the higher four notes. And then I'm going to throw the F9 to the E9. And then I'll put that 13th in there. So here it is, slow. So hopefully you'll get it all. It's going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, 4. Actually, I should have put the A7th. That's forgot what I was showing you earlier. You have that. So we're going to do this again. Okay, right here. There's the D9. Throw the diminish in. Run it. Three frets. A. Ninth fret. The little walk down. And then here's the five chord. Walk down to the four chord. And then this turnaround, what I'm calling the turnaround, there's that diminish I showed you, that minor seventh, and then F9, E ninth, A. So one more time. So. Okay, let's put that on there and uh, record that and see what that sounds like. It's a lot of fun once you put all these together and just mix and match however you want. I could have, uh, go back to that, put the extension, you don't have to do it the exact order I showed you, you can do the short one, the long one here, I could go back to the uh, just regular nights and I could throw in the turnaround. Now go back to this six, seven thing I showed you on rhythm example five, the jazzy turnarounds, diminishes, back to the funky uh, thing with the extensions, E9, back to my turnaround. There you go.